what I generally teach people to do is how to practice forgiveness. Forgive the other person, forgive themselves. And I've seen a lot of healings come from that. Uh, liver diseases, things like that. They remember a past lifetime where they stabbed somebody else in the liver. And then when they start forgiving themselves and forgiving that other person, then they feel a relief immediately and, and they'll go to the their health practitioner and start talking about how great they feel because they don't, don't have this pain anymore. It really does work. And I, I, I spend, oh, probably, I give a retreat for 20 people. There might be three people that I teach the forgiveness meditation to. Because the forgiveness meditation is part of the loving kindness meditation. But this is very, very powerful. When they start forgiving everything, like I tell them, you sit and forgive yourself. How do you forgive yourself? You forgive yourself for not understanding. You forgive yourself for making a mistake. You forgive yourself for causing other people pain. Okay. Now you just stay with one of those statements for a period of time. It might be one sitting, two sitting, three sittings with the same forgiveness. And it can bring up a memory of something that happened in the, in the past where you didn't understand. And then you start forgiving yourself with that memory. And you forgive the other people involved with it. And then you hear them forgive you for not understanding. But that's only a part of the forgiveness meditation. The rest is, I want you to forgive everything all the time. Any kind of little physical alley that happens, forgive it. Every time somebody comes up and they disturb you a little bit, forgive them. Forgive everything. Forgive yourself for not liking this or that. Or wanting something to happen. Or for liking this or that. It doesn't matter. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiveness in your mind. After three or four days, the forgiveness can get so strong that you will start forgiving in your dreams. And you start noticing that Certain people would come up to you and they were always annoying and now they don't bother you anymore. Now there are some things that happen in your past where you can forgive that person for causing that pain but that doesn't mean that you're going to be their best buddy from here on out. If you get around that person again, you're, you're going to be more cautious around that person, but you're not going to be best friends. So this is a kind of awareness that happens with forgiveness that sets your mind free very much. It's a very, very powerful meditation. I've never seen anything as powerful. And when they use it, and use it often, I mean, I have a, a way of breaking my toes. I wear sandals all the time, and sometimes I don't wear sandals, and I walk around and I kick things and break a toe. I start forgiving them right straight away. I forgive myself for doing it. I don't dwell on the pain. I send forgiveness into that spot that the the pain is. And 
before long I'm forgetting that I even had the pain? I have a friend that I showed him this meditation and he used to have a wood burning stove and he was continually burning himself. He'd get the stove real hot and then he'd want to put more fire or water wood in and he'd open it up and he'd touch the metal. So he started experimenting with this and sometimes he would forgive it and sometimes he wouldn't and he would see how long it took to heal. The things that he would forgive in two or three days he didn't even remember that they were there. If he didn't, it might last a week or ten days. Now, what's the difference? The pain is still the pain. Are you lovingly accepting that? Or are you resisting it and cursing it? Forgive everything. Forgive these clowns that cut you off in the, in the traffic. Uh, when I was, uh, I used to be a contractor. Okay, and build houses like this, fancy houses. And I always had a plumber, but sometimes he wouldn't do everything that needed to be done, so I got to do it. And I hate plumbing. I absolutely hate I'm too big to be a plumber. You know, it's always down there. <laughs> There's that much space to work in. So he, he'd forget to do something and I'd have to take care of it. And I'd be grumbling along sometimes a couple hours, cursing this thing. God, it just it never seems that the things will fit just right. They're always off and they have to be perfect. And then I would remember. And I would get up and I would start sending loving kindness and forgiveness of myself. And then I would go down and within two or three minutes, stop. And I saw this happen I don't know how many times. You think I'd be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen so often anymore, but I'm a monk. I don't know anything. <laughs> we had, I, I became a monk I went to this monastery that had a van like this that was squeaky so I got up on a chair and I started fixing and somebody came in and saw me and they were oh, what are you doing and I said I'm fixing the van and they said well monks don't know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm done. I don't know how to do anything. <laughs>